welcome back to the LNX Files. As always, this is a safe space for all things spooky, and today we're going to use these tarot cards to do a wellness check on Gwen Stefani, Blake Shelton. This was a viewer requested video. Let's get going. So this was a viewer requested video. We are still in kind of like the beginning of fall. You know, it's we're kind of post back to school season, pre Halloween season, although the entire month of October is devoted to Halloween in my household. But still not a ton of drama. Like, thank good, like Travis and Taylor are happening so we can talk about that. But otherwise, like things are still kind of quiet and when that happens I go to the list and I go to the viewer requested videos which I keep very neatly on these post-it notes. So to me the most interesting thing about Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton getting together was just simply the timeline. Like as we know Gwen had been married to Gavin Rossdale for about like 13 years he was banging the man, the nanny who very creepily dressed like Gwen. So we recently did a video for Gwen and Gavin and why they didn't work. I had totally forgotten that he very publicly was running around with the nanny. This woman, this young woman that Gwen trusted with her home, her family, her children, and who creepily would like dress like her and wanted to, I guess, sleep with her husband and live her life. That's not at all weird, right? So the most interesting thing is that like Gwen and Gavin got a divorce of August 2020, August of 2015. And then Gwen and Blake Shelton started dating in November of 2015. And if I recall correctly, Blake Shelton was also post divorce. Let me check that. So Blake Shelton and Miranda Lambert divorced in July of 2015. It, it does seem very faded because Essentially, Blake Shelton's marriage to Miranda Lambert imploded and the divorce was finalized in July of 2015. And then Gwen Stefani was right after him in August of 2015. And then they started dating officially in November 2015. Most likely, they were probably running around on the low. It was just when it was announced officially. But if you think about it, maybe it's not as quick and shocking as it seems because they were coworkers on The Voice for so long. Let's see when they met. Right, so they had met a year earlier uh, in April 2014 where they were co-hosts and they both had their chairs on The Voice and I never watched the show, but if you watch the show, put it in the comments. And they were both still married at the time. And then a year before they get together, you know, Gwen posts their first selfie together in November of 2014. Isn't that interesting? And what does she say? Oh, no comment. Oh, heart him. Oh, wow. So the seeds were already there. The seeds were already planted. And essentially they were doing everything right. You know, they, everything they say that you're supposed to do when it comes to starting a relationship, which is that, um, you know, start with a strong friendship. And that'll be your foundation from there, right? Okay, and then they got engaged in 2020, and then they got married July 3rd, 2021. And they're still running around together. They still seem pretty happy, are they? We're going to find out. So what's really interesting to me is that like Gwen Stefani, she has a very crowded 10th house. The 10th house is your place of your public image, your career, your very public accomplishments. So she has Jupiter in the 10th house. So having a benefic in the 10th house means that like your career is working for you in all sorts of ways, including perhaps, you know, finding a romantic interest. So as we know, Gwen Stefani is a Libra. She has a Capricorn rising and a moon in Cancer. So she doesn't have eight children, as one of you pointed out. The first video we did on her, I was like, oh, and she's got like eight children. She's got three children. The Capricorn rising is her being a hard worker, but the Libra sun, Libras love partnership. They love bringing people together. They love being, you know, having someone on the other end of their scale, right? So Blake Sheldon, not a ton known about him. He's a Gemini with a moon in Pisces. If you know his rising sign or for some reason the time he was born, I don't know why you would know that about this country music boy who I do, do not find attractive, but women do. Somehow women find this man attractive. If you find Blake Sheldon attractive, put it in the comments. Cause like, you know, with Southern boys, I think I, I'm a Yankee. You know, I just, I just don't think I find them attractive, period. You know, I do like, uh, how polite they are. You know, there's like a very prim and proper side of me that's like, yes, please and thank you. And they're like, ma'am, 
like when they don't hear you instead of saying like what or pardon the mic ma'am you know <laughs> have you ever experienced that where you're like oh we should all and they're like ma'am ma'am uh, it's 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 darling i i think it's really really darling um blake shilton also has his venus in his mercury and gemini so he likes to talk he likes to chat he likes to communicate through song you know he's got that very emotional watery moon in pisces pisces the modern ruler of pisces and is neptune neptune rules music because music is like nebulous and diaphanous and notes and things and scales and some people can do it and other people can't right okay so yeah let's see how they're doing right so are they compatible well the answer is yes Two air signs together, elementally very compatible. Like a Libra would be fine with all the chatter from a Gemini for the most part. And with Blake Shelton, with Mercury and Gemini, that's going to be a lot of chatter. They both have their moons in water signs, so they, they're able to forge like a deep emotional connection and to support each other emotionally as they did during their very public divorces. So that truly a blessing from the universe. But let's see how they're doing right now. Okay. Okay. Gwen, Blake, Gwen, Blake, helping or hurting this situation, and where's the energy heading? Okay. All right, so Gwen's external vibe towards Blake. Hmm. This is a weird card to get. So we got the King of Swords in reverse. So when it, with these relationship spreads, or really with this card in reverse at any time, you just want to be really careful. Because upright, this is the truth-telling king. This is the king who's in touch with reality. He's... He's seen a lot of ugliness on the battlefields, and he can sort of live to tell you the story about it. So when this card comes up in reverse, it can mean one of two things. So it can mean someone just straight up lying to your face. It can mean someone misrepresenting the truth or about, like, reality or, you know, a, a host of other issues. Or it can mean someone who's holding on to something. Sometimes with this court card in reverse, the swords have not been able to cut the emotional cords from like some past issues, some past hurt, you know, some way that they felt like they were wronged. We could say that either Gwen's like being dishonest or there's something that she needs to let go of that she's having trouble letting go of. So that's really interesting. Okay. All right. And Blake's external vibe towards Gwen. Also very interesting. So we've got the Ace of Swords in reverse. So two Swords cards and both coming up reversed. So Ace of Swords upright, mind over matter. The situation is difficult, but you're above it. You know, this is the classic oh, Michelle Obama, when they go low, we go high type of card where like sometimes it's just like you get the answers you need. Truth prevails through the clouds and you're like, oh yes, I got it. I see. I know what to do now. Like it, all of these things can be encompassed in this card. So when this card comes up in reverse, it can just quite simply be like you find out information about someone that you did not know and you do not like. That's number one. Or it can just be like the situation is challenging and you're not going high. The situation is low and you going low. So there's something about these two cards that they're having trouble communicating or interacting with each other or riffing about the reality of a situation. So that's very, very interesting. Okay. Gwen's internal vibe towards Blake. Hmm. So the reason I paused for a second is because we got the moon card in reverse. And I was like, I wonder if they're trying to get pregnant, which is like kind of nuts. It's like kind of crazy. Like she's 47. Wait, or is she 50? Oh, who knows? Like, but that was the first place my mind went was I, I was like, were they trying to have a kid together? Just because like she has so many kids. She's got her moon in cancer. Like, a lot of these celebrities, they don't really feel like age should stop them from doing whatever they want. And with the moon card in reverse, it can mean, like, things that which were foggy or nebulous are now coming clear. Like, things that were hidden are now being revealed. So you don't have to trust your gut or rely on your intuition so much. You can just trust what you see in front of you. You can trust the physical world. But the moon is also connected to, like, the menses and to motherhood and to pregnancy and to fertility it's a, you know it represents all of those things so this card in reverse just made me wonder i was like i wonder if like a child ha or issues conceiving because maybe they'd use a surrogate who knows like are coming to the forefront so that's interesting we can uh, we can pull an additional card on that okay so blake's internal vibe towards gwen 
guys, we've gotten all reversals for these two. So we got the Fool in reverse. So upright, this is a card of like taking the leap, jumping into the red mist, starting a new adventure and just being really happy and optimistic and confident about it. You know, leaping and just knowing everything's going to be okay. So when you... So when this card is in reverse, it's like cold feet, lack of confidence, lack of optimism, not wanting to take the plunge. So he's having cold feet about something. And it's interesting because like I almost feel like this issue doesn't have to do with them. Like it's something outside their connection. Okay. So what was helping or hurting the situation? Oh, geez. Okay. Ten of cups in reverse. So things aren't normal at home. I know that like... They put on a good show for the world, right? Of like the happy, happily ever after, which is what Ten of Cups means. And they still got the Ten of Cups, you know, but this can also just mean like things are a jangle. Things are destabilized. Things are not what they should be. Things are just kind of like up in the air. You know, the, the home is just quite frankly not stabilized. So that's really interesting. So far, all reversals. I never would have expected that for these two. Okay. And where's the energy heading? Okay, well, um, we got the Hermit card. So the Hermit card's Major Arcana, and it means that some deep emotional, spiritual heavy lifting has to be done, and that probably each of them have to look inward, look really hard and long inward and at the man in the mirror. The one hint that we got about this was that in, like, the People magazine timeline, which I can pull up right here. So... I was looking at one of those, like, really sort of cheesy People magazine blurbs. Not even a blurb, one of those long-ass timelines about, like, Blake and Gwen, timeline of their relationship. So, which are, like, very curated and very, like, scrubbed of any humanity. But there's one little hint that this People magazine article gives, which is that January 2021, Gwen Stefani says she and Blake Sheldon had healing to do before their engagement. Like, healing from what? Healing from being rich millionaires and, like, both being, like, good-looking and in love? Like, I'm sorry, like, what was the healing you guys needed to do? That's a hint here, okay? This is the one card that came in upright, the Hermit card. So, I imagine they have more healing to do. Look, things are destabilized. They're a jangle between these two. They're, they're having difficult times. Let's pull one more card and ask, can you tell us the nature of the issue that they're having like is it about conceiving a child is it about a third party i don't think it's about a third party i mean all they're saying is that like feelings have been hurt five of cups feelings have been hurt one of them is more sad than the other this is really interesting. So that's what I've got for you guys. Comment below. Let me know what you think of these two in the comments. What do you think this issue is? Because I never in a million years would have guessed we would have gotten cards like this for these two. So put your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And as always, we'll do this again.